welcome to Sunshine for Your Life. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I bought an atomic watch, and it's so accurate that it won't lose more than one second in three million years. Now, do I need that much accuracy? Probably not. But a lot of the things that I do are very time sensitive, and I thought it would be nice to have a watch that always will be accurate. So I had a friend set it, and in order to set it, they have to set it to the time zone that you're in. And after that happens, it sets itself. If the time changes because it's daylight savings or whatever it is, it'll just automatically set itself, and it's already going to be perfectly accurate. And I thought that was fascinating. Unfortunately, this watch now is an hour and two minutes behind. And I think that's a little laughable. I think when I had my friend set it, because I'm all thumbs when it comes to electronics, I think he set it for the wrong time zone. So I could understand it's being an hour slow because he may have set it to the wrong time zone. I don't understand the two minutes, but at any rate, it is that, mu that much behind. Now, many people live busy lives, and they love it, and their appointments and their meetings are very time sensitive. They have to be where they have to be, and, and that there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Unfortunately, we live in a society that teaches us that being busy is the way to show that you're important and that you're needed. There's not much time for reflection or introspection. As a Christian, have you ever noticed that Jesus, although he was always busy, never seemed to be in a hurry? He never said to his disciples, hurry up, we're going to be late. Lazarus died four days ago and we're not there yet. You know, he never said anything like that. He deliberately took his time. And there are reasons, legal reasons, why he didn't want to show up for Lazarus' death until four days later. And the reason was this. In the Jewish culture, if you were dead and they buried you, they didn't consider you to be legally dead until four days after your actual death. So if he had gone to see Lazarus right away and comfort Martha and Mary, because <clears throat> he was their brother, if he had gone before that four-day period, what would have happened with that people would say, when he, he, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, it was a real miracle. But he, the people would say, well, he wasn't really dead because he wasn't legally dead because that four-day period hadn't actually uh, transpired yet, even though obviously his body was gone. That was the reason for the delay. But Jesus never said to his disciple, hurry up, we're going to be late. He never rushed them. He, they followed him, and he uh, wanted them to rest. He would be more likely to say, come ye apart and rest a while, which he also said, and that's a scripture in the New Testament. In the New Testament, two women, Martha and Mary, were sisters, and they were, they were guests at they were great friends of Jesus, and they opened their home to him. Martha was always working and preparing meals. Mary, however, was always listening to Jesus, listening to what he had to say. So I'm going to read some scripture. It's not going to be on the screen. Luke 10, 38 through 41, about Martha and Mary. And this is what it says. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. Only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Your relationship with God is the most important thing you have, the most important thing. And we, uh, and we do lead busy lives, and sometimes just in the terms of of uh, doing things for God, having ministry, we leave, lead very interesting lives. And many of us thrive on and we thrive on being busy. But the one thing that we have to remember is that we are serving God. So when we are ultra busy, and this includes everybody, because at some point I think we all are, remember that your relationship with God is ongoing. Every day, God is taking care of you, and you need to learn from him and be in fellowship 
with him every day. Jesus knows you intimately. He knows you everything about you. He knows you before you were born. He knew bef you before you even existed because he was involved in creating you and uh, giving you birth to begin with. So this is some of the scriptures that I wanted to read to you. The first one being Psalm 139, verse 13. And uh, this one will be on the screen. Psalm 139, 13, this is what it says. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Let me go and read that again. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. You know what that says? It's saying that God himself created human beings. God himself was there when they were being formed. Now, different scriptures uh, and different versions of scriptures will, will phrase that in a different kind of way, but it means the same thing. Some will say, well, I, I was formed in, in darkness. I was formed in, um, in underground. Uh, you know, some of the modern translations, I think they tend to uh, mix it up a little bit. But at any rate, there's no doubt about it. God was there when you were being formed. And it goes on to say that you were fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, the next scripture on the screen is going to be Psalm 139, verse 16. And this is what it says. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. I want to read that again. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Now, what is that saying? Last session, the uh, last show, I, I read the same verse, but it was in a, 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 an older version. All the things that happened to you are already foreknown by God. God already knows everything that's going to happen to you every single day. It's like everything has been written in a book before any of these things come to pass. God already knows it. He knows what you're going to say before you say it. He knows when you're going to stand up. He knows when you're going to sit down. He knows everything you're going to do before you do it. And so what this is saying, and this is kind of confirming that, that uh, all the days that you have that were ordained for you have already been written down before they ever came to be. So God knows your future. He understands your past. He knows your future. And so therefore, you are important to him. And to say that you're not worthy or you're not important would not be the truth, because he knew you before you were born. He knew everything and knows everything that's ever going to happen to you. And so for that reason, he is taking care of you and he's working with you. So all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Now, the third scripture on the screen is going to be Ephesians 2.10. And this is what it says. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And I'm going to read that again. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So what is he saying here? We are his workmanship. He has created us. He caused us to be born. We are his workmanship. We were created by him and in him for good works. We were created to do good things. We were created to have good careers. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be a career person. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be a homemaker. All of these things are good. He has chosen these things for us so that when we have a ministry, or in my case, I'm ordained as a minister, and I've been so for quite a few years, and so whatever your, your calling is, it may not be to be a minister. It may be to be a nurse or a doctor or a mechanic or a person who picks up the garbage. And believe me, that's important, too. You see, everything that we do has been ordained for us to do by God ahead of time. He knew it all before we were even born. And so we are ordained to do good works. 
and the Bible, the King James, will say that we walk in them. If you are following God, the things that you do have already been chosen for you to do. The timing of them is critical, but God's not going to shortchange you. I had a good friend of mine who was a college professor. I was a college professor myself, and we didn't teach in the same college. But we, we uh, talked together quite a bit because we were both professors. And, you know, if you're a professor, you know what other professors are going through and how they're planning and all of that, that planning their classes and their writings. And I know I've published some things, and my friend also had published some things. So we got together a lot. And uh, he became very ill. And uh, he was afraid that he's not going to finish his work before he dies, you know. And, and we thought he would get better. Well, he did pass on, and his wife was very, very upset because she said he didn't finish. He didn't finish his work. And uh, it, he left before his work was finished. And so what I did for her as a counselor, even though I wasn't specifically counseling her, I pointed her to some of the scriptures that says, what he does in us, he will bring to completion. And there are verses in the scripture, I don't have them written down here, but there are verses in the scripture that say, what he has begun in you, the good works that he has begun in you, he will bring to completion. Now, either complete completely complete, or your part of it will be complete before you go home to be with him. So she didn't have to worry. He had finished all that he was supposed to do. God will not shortchange you on the time that you need. Whatever it is that you need, he will provide for you. And one of those things he's going to provide for you is time. So he knows what he wants you to do, and he's going to bring it to pass. Now, I like the phrase uh, that we walk in good works because they encompass us. Our good works surround us and we walk in them. When we are so busy, we need to take time to remember that God thinks about us all the time. And I'm going to, this is not going to be on the screen, but I'm going to read Psalm 139.17, which says this, God, your thoughts about me are priceless. No one can add them all up. If I could count them, they would be more than the grains of sand. And let me read it again. God, your thoughts about me are priceless. No one can add them all up. If I could count them, they would be more than the grains of sand. And I think of a beach, and I think of, because I live close to a beach, uh, and I think of all the sand. God's thoughts to us are so many and constant all the time, 24-7, that these thoughts are more than the grains of sand on a beach. And sometimes when I've talked about that verse, I've actually brought in a container of sand, beach sand. Beach sand is like a little quartz crystals. How many can you get on like a tablespoon or a teaspoon? Millions and millions. His thoughts toward you are millions and millions of thoughts all the time. He never stops thinking about you. He caused you to be born. He caused you to be created. He knows everything that's going to happen to you. And as a result of that, his thoughts of you are never ending. He's constantly thinking about you all the time. We have been designed to be busy, of course, but we have also been designed to rest. And Matthew, and this is not going to be on the screen either, but I want to read Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30, and it says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Let me read that whole thing again. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. That's Matthew 11, 28 through 30. And it comes to mind, I think about it now, when oxen are leading and doing their work, when you get a younger, more immature oxen, they put a yoke on them. That takes two oxen and puts them together so they're working together. So the younger one and the weaker one learns 
from the one that's more mature and stronger. And it makes the workload easier because two of them are doing it and not one. So he says, take my yoke upon you. He, what he really is saying is, join in with me. You may be the weaker one, but we're working together. My yoke is going to be easy. My burden is going to be light. Why? You're not doing it alone. You're doing it with God. You are working together with God. So therefore, the picture of the two oxen, one stronger than the other, is a good picture. And I think that's probably what the writer had in mind here when he's talking about that. Take my yoke, or Jesus is actually stating this, take my yoke upon you. Let's, let's work in tandem. I will be the stronger one. You're the weaker one. That's OK. You're a human being. You're not God. Take my yoke upon you and work with me. That's how they do it with oxen. And I think that's kind of a picture of God's invitation to us. Be with me. Take my yoke. Work with me. Rest is a gift from God, and it has benefits for us. We increase our strength. We have greater joy. We have more peace, and I think sometimes more clarity of mind. If you're working half the night and you're not sleeping and you're trying to solve the problems of the world, or you're just plain awake because you have insomnia and you're not getting the rest that you need, it cuts down somewhat in the acuity of your mind. So God is going to finish us the work that he has to do with us in a way that can be comfortable for us. You're not doing your work alone. You don't have to be frantic about it. God has chosen you to do his work, and he knows what your schedule is, and he knows that you're busy, but he also wants you to rest in him. He will arrange your life if you let him. Don't get going and get so busy that you leave him out. That would be a serious mistake. He comes first always. And I'm going to close with a quote. It's, it's Jeremiah 29, 11. And this is what it says. I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And I'm going to read that again. I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. You do have a future. You do have a hope. Even in the time of pandemic, you have it. All you have to do is trust God. Let him lead you and understand that he knows everything that's happening to you, everything that has ever happened to you, and he knows how he's going to bring your life to fruition, to do the things he wants you to do, to help you with that, and to do it in a way that you're not doing it alone, and you don't have the whole burden. He is with you because you take his yoke upon you. So I'm going to close it here, and we'll be doing something next week. It's a little different. Please join me then.